Uh, hello students, this is the uh, start of session 14 and the start of chapter 7 in which we are going to talk about diffusion. Uh, in this chapter uh, we will talk about how uh, does diffusion occur. Uh, we will address why is it an important part of processing, why is diffusion an important part of processing, how can the rate of diffusion be predicted for some simple cases actually of course and we will talk about how does diffusion depend on structure and temperature uh, many reactions that are important in uh, materials um, depends on the transfer of mass within a specific solid or from a liquid or solid or uh, a gas. Uh, this is uh, accomplished and done by diffusion which is uh, the process of a material transport by atomic motion. Uh, the diffusion mechanism uh, for um, uh, gas and liquids uh, as indicated here is uh, basically based on random uh, Brownian motion. In solid we have two main mechanisms vacancy diffusion and interstitial diffusion uh, in the vacancy diffusion <coughs> we have an atom that is moving from uh, a normal lattice position to uh, an adjacent uh, uh, vacant site so it looks for a, a vacancy and then moves the vacancy similar to figure 7.3 part A page 183 of your book uh, and uh, the next one, um, mechanism is interstitial diffusion in which um, the atom uh, migrates from an ins uh, interstitial position to a neighboring one uh, that is empty uh, similar to figure 73 uh, part B uh, a very common type of diffusion in the daily life which um, human is uh, experiencing thousands uh, of times in a day is uh, the transferring of oxygen in uh, lungs air sacs to the blood and also diffusion of um, CO2 from the blood cell to the air sacs as you can see in this image which is taken from this uh, YouTube the YouTube is animating this process um, the, uh, uh, very clear the process of diffusion is also uh, shown here schematically when you see we have higher concentration or existence of uh, material type A here and then the right side of the <coughs> same chamber we have lower concentration so after a while you see migration of these atoms or these type of molecules to the right side and then we have a homogeneous distribution of uh, these material in the whole uh, chamber. In an alloy uh, what happens atom tends to migrate as I said from regions of high concentration to regions of low concentration so if they are initially sorry uh, look like this we have atom A and atom B uh, after some time you will see uh, the orange atom are migrated to the gray ones and uh, vice versa so we can show uh, the concentration profile for these two type of materials as shown here the left side where we only have <coughs> orange atom and the left gray and the right and then uh, what we have after sometimes a different concentration profile for both type of atom as shown here uh, this process is also observed in an elemental solids uh, even in a solids that we have one type of element atoms also migrate so if we label some atoms as shown here after sometimes we see that they have been displaced and uh, vacancy diffusion mechanism as I said atoms exchange with uh, vacancies so this applies to uh, substitutional impurities atoms uh, as you can see here we have um, a vacancy uh, adjacent to these orange atom so what will happen this orange atom moves and migrates to this one now we have a vacancy here so this atom goes down and now we have a vacancy at this point so the gray atom uh, migrates to this one so after 
sometimes we will see that these two are diffusing into each other. The rate of diffusion here depends on a number of vacancy and of course activation energy for uh, the exchange. Uh, in other words, if we give further energy or uh, further activation energy which is uh, usually happening by uh, increasing the temperature giving heat to the system this uh, process of diffusion will be faster and faster. Uh, you can find uh, videos showing a simulation of different type of uh, diffusion this one is showing interdiffusion. Um, it should be noted that the rate of uh, this uh, substitutional diffusion depends on of course uh, the concentration of these vacancy the vacant places or sites and frequency of jumping which is related to the uh, activation energy or temperature. Uh, the second um, type of uh, diffusion mechanism as uh, stated is interstitial diffusion where smaller atoms as you can see here uh, can diffuse between uh, uh, other atoms. Uh, this is the same uh, figure figure 7.3 in your book. Bear in mind that interstitial diffusion is more rapid than uh, vacancy diffusion. Uh, diffusion is used in processing an example as case hardening where um, the external part of the, uh, the external surface of a part is hardened. Here um, diff um, carbon atoms actually diffuse into the host um, ion atoms at the surface example is shown here um, this is an example of an interstitial diffusion uh, and this is this photo showing a case hardened gear as a result of presence of more carbon atoms in the ion now we have a harder iron or steel another application of diffusion in processing is shown here in this process which is called doping uh, here silicon with phosphorus for n-type semiconductor has been doped. Uh, in this process uh, first uh, phosphorus rich layers uh, on the surface of silicon has been deposited then it is uh, heated and finally uh, the phosphor has been doped into the semiconductor regions. Uh, the image shows um, a computer chip in which um, silicon and aluminum atom has been doped. How do we quantify the amount or rate of diffusion? Uh, we quantify this value using this uh, relation. So the rate of diffusion or flux is equal to the moles or mass diffusing per area time therefore the unit is uh, mole per centimeter squared second or kilogram per meter squared second uh, we can also measure <coughs> the flux or the rate of diffusion uh, empirically uh, first what we need we need to make a thin a thin film or membrane of known cross-sectional area. Uh, this area is imposed to cons uh, concentration gradients and then how fast atoms or molecules diffuse uh, through the membrane is measured. Then the value of flux is found by mass divided by area times T and because this mass is changing by uh, time so uh, the proper form is to use this relation which is showing the change of mass per time. It's also indicated here so if uh, the value of mass diffused is uh, changing by time so then we see this the, this slope is the same as dm over dt therefore the value of flux is dependent and is uh, directly related to the slope of uh, this curve. If uh, the rate of diffusion is independent of time it's called steady state diffusion. As you can see we have a certain value of concentration of material 1 here, certain uh, value of concentration at point 2 
here this is point one and this is point two therefore uh, we can say that flux is uh, proportional to concentration gradients so change in concentration in uh, in the location and then we can write down <coughs> the value of flux is equal to this <coughs> A relation in which d is a uh, diffusion coefficient this is known as fixed uh, first law of diffusion which is used for steady state diffusion if the change of uh, concentration along the position is linear then we can write instead of dc over dx this relation we can simplify it into c2 minus c1 which is uh, the change in concentration uh, divided by change in the position. Uh, now look at this example uh, talking about uh, chemical protective clothing. Uh, here a uh, butyl rubber glove which with this thickness is used to, <coughs> to protect the skin, the hand skin from uh, diffusion of methylene chloride uh, which is a paint remover and it's written and uh, it's harmful for the skin so I think this is a very good uh, example to show the application of uh, diffusion uh, based on the data that we have we have a thickness of the glove we have diffusion coefficient in centimeter squared per second uh, we have the concentration, surface concentration. This is uh, the concentration out of the glove and we don't want this concentration to be more than this value inside the glove where it's uh, exposed to the skin. Uh, we can assume a linear concentration gradient between C1 which is uh, to the side of paint remover to C2 which is uh, the side of skin the position x1 and x2 are showing two sides of the glove thickness so the distance between here to here is as it's mentioned here 0 0.04 centimeter or 0 0.4 millimeter to solve this question we can uh, because we assumed a linear concentration gradient so we can use uh, the idea that we went through in this formula we can find the flux using this relation you have the value of d instead of dc over dx uh, because it's a linear change in uh, the concentration value versus displacement then we can use this value instead of dx and uh, then we can solve the problem d is given c1 and c2 are given and we know x2 minus x1 is 0 0.04 centimeter so we can find the value of flux uh, by this method. We can work this um, uh, in details in, in the class. Uh, in the other hand we have uh, non-steady state in which uh, the diffusion flux and the concentration gradient at some particular point uh, in a body or in a solid vary with time so th the value is changing with time and uh, a non-steady state diffusion is uh, more practical uh, diffusion situation compared to this steady state one. We will talk about uh, this more in the next slide. Uh, as we indicated one of the things that has a direct effect on diffusion is temperature. Of course uh, diffusion coefficient increases with increasing time uh, sorry with increasing temperature. Uh, to find this relation we can use the, the relation between temperature and uh, diffusion we can use this relation in which uh, capital D is a diffusion coefficient and its unit is meter squared per second D0 is or D0 is uh, pre exponential and it has uh, the same unit as diffusion coefficient QD is uh, activation energy and its unit is joules per mole or electron volt per atom R is gas constant and you know its value and T is sorry T is <coughs> absolute temperature in degree Kelvin and based on this relation D has exponential dependence on T temperature and if we draw D 
uh, we plot the logarithmic uh, value of diffusion coefficient versus the reciprocal uh, absolute uh, temp uh, temperature for several metals we see that this uh, relation now if we draw this logarithmic value is changed into a linear one and it's easier to work with this chart this chart is shown in page 191 figure 7 7 of your book uh, we will work in the rest of the uh, material in uh, chapter 7 in the next session thank you